Hey guys, Dr. Lawrence here. Uh, if you missed our previous video on prepping for a fast with a low carbohydrate diet, um, check it out. Today we are going to talk about the, the second kind of strategy I use in helping people have a successful fast and that is implementing intermittent fasting or time restricted eating. Our last video talked about a low carbohydrate diet to successfully reduce hunger, improve satiation, uh, and allow us to prep for a fast better. Uh, intermittent fasting and time restricted eating takes that to the next step. And I have also found that most people can more successfully intermittent fast if they're on a low carbohydrate diet. <clears throat> so what does time restricted eating or intermittent fasting even mean? Uh, it kind of depends on who you speak to. Uh, right now we'll use that term slightly interchangeably, but let me explain to you what it means uh, at the core. It means narrowing the window that we eat every single day. And that means uh, we will say fast for 12, 14, or 16 hours, and then only eat for say maybe eight hours during that, win during that day if we do a 16 hour fast. So to give you a real world example, it would be like eating dinner and then not eating nothing after dinner, going to bed, waking up the next morning, not having breakfast, and then having lunch around noon or one o'clock, and then having dinner again around six or seven, okay? That narrows our eating window to about six hours and our fasting window to about 18 hours. So that is what this idea of intermittent fasting really means. However, jumping into a 16-8 intermittent fast is not right for everybody. That can actually be really challenging for some folks, especially if they have a large degree of hunger um, or they may have some blood sugar regulation issues. So we might need to start a little bit easier. Uh, that might be starting with a 12 hour window. So after dinner, maybe they finish eating at seven o'clock and that means the next, you know, they'll go to bed, not eat after that, wake up the next morning and have breakfast at seven. They've successfully completed a 12 hour in intermittent fast and now the next 12 hours they'll kind of eat as they desire and ideally following a low carbohydrate diet as we mentioned in the first video. That said, one of the goals I usually set for my patients is to be able to work towards a 16 hour fast, eight hour feeding window. The great thing about this is that generally speaking, uh, our hunger hormones in the morning are relatively low and a lot of people even without trying too hard can skip breakfast pretty easily. The other benefit is that during this eight hour window you can eat however much and whenever you want really. Um, so there's no calorie restriction whatsoever and in fact, um, you know, as long as we're following a low carbohydrate diet, this is, you know, an ideal time to eat until you're full, right? Following those previous rules. So you can see how intermittent fasting is naturally like the next in, uh, step at you know growing our fa our fasting practice. We've started with a low carbohydrate diet to reduce hunger and improve satiation. We've now narrowed our, our window of eating to around eight hours during the day. We're going to get further drops of insulin better blood sugar regulation during this time. And in fact, we're actually gonna increase fat burning. So for some people, this step alone can be an incredibly powerful tool for helping reverse uh, their diabetes, helping reverse PCOS, helping reverse you know, uh, obesity. Uh, and they may not necessarily need to take deeper steps into fasting. However, once someone can kind of intermittent fast on a routine basis, uh, pretty successfully, most of the time they're looking for that next challenge and that's why we're going to dive deeper into the extended fasts in the next video. So I get this question a lot as well, well don't I need to eat breakfast? Isn't it the most important meal of the day? No. And I think you'll be surprised at how easily you can let that meal slide um, without finding uh, that you miss it much at all. There is, however, some interesting research on intermittent fasting and when we should time that feasting or that eating window. Generally speaking, most of my patients do it in the afternoon. They find it pretty easy to skip breakfast. Hunger hormones are pretty low at that time. And 
you know, they might have a cup of coffee, rides them through the morning, and they'll have lunch, and then they'll have dinner. Uh, we Dinner tends to be a little bit more of a social meal as well, and so it, it kind of fits into our social framework of the day, and it makes a lot of sense, okay? And not a lot of people like to go to bed hungry. Uh, and so with that, having our eight-hour feasting window in the afternoon and evening generally works for a lot of folks. There is, however, some research showing that we may actually get even better glycemic control, blood sugar control, um, weight regulation, if we shift that window to the morning, meaning our meal is you know, breakfast and lunch and we fast during dinner time. I have a couple of patients doing this, but they tend to find it's a little challenging socially. Um, and remember, the reason why we're doing this is not to sit and starve. The reason we're doing, we're doing this is not to be hungry and miserable. We're doing this to kind of implement a sustainable therapeutic tool in our life, like regardless of what we are kind of challenged with. So we need to find ways that it's going to fit with our life. And there's no real right or wrong way to do a fast. To recap, our first video was about why fasting? Why should I do it? What can it do for me? Our second video introduced why emphasizing a low-carbohydrate diet is going to be helpful at having a successful fast. Today we talked about implementing intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating, narrowing the time window during the day in which we eat so that we can get even more aggressive blood sugar, insulin control, and weight control. And this is the first step, kind of dipping our toe uh, in the shallow end of the pool into kind of more aggressive aggressive fasting strategies. So I'll encourage you to start you know, following the advice in, in, in the low carbohydrate diet, starting to implement some uh, intermittent fasting and see how it is for you. Uh, leave us some comments uh, about how it's going for you. If you have any questions about it, please leave it in the comments as well. I'm happy to answer those. And uh, I look forward to you tuning in for our next video on more um, aggressive duration fast. The information in these videos is provided for informational purpose only. It's not intended to substitute for the advice of your doctor or other healthcare professionals. Do not use this information for diagnosing or treating any health problem or disease and always talk with your doctor before taking any medications, nutritional supplements, implementing any fasting routines. If you suspect you have a medical problem, contact your healthcare provider. This video does not constitute a doctor-patient relationship, and no statements have been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.